Hey people of the internet, welcome to the channel. My name is Todd with Empower Automotive and today we're going to be talking about the 10 most common issues with the Hyundai Elantra N, uh, which can also apply to the Kona N and the Veloster N. So just a little background on my car, I've owned my 2022 Hyundai Elantra N for a little bit over a year now. I've put 21,000, almost 21,000 miles on it and I've really had no major issues whatsoever. Um, I would just call them little minor annoyances. And in fact, on this list of the most common issues with the Elantra N, I've only experienced a handful of them. So if you're interested to know some of the most common problems with the Elantra N, again, also might apply to the Kona N and the Veloster N, then stay tuned. <laughs> Let's get started. So the number one most common issue with the Hyundai Elantra N that I've seen over and over in the groups is the knock sensor. This issue actually uh, results from the knock sensor, which is located underneath the intake manifold. And the real problem here is not the knock sensor itself, which is there to pull timing whenever the sensor detects knock, which is usually caused by a low octane fuel being used. The sensor itself, again, is not the real issue. The issue is the lack of a splash shield covering the sensor under the car. So what happens is if you're driving through an extremely heavy rain or you're bringing your car to the car wash and it has one of those undercarriage sprayers, the sensor gets wet and then it just goes bad and throws a code and will put the car into limp mode. Now, I've seen this again come up over and over um, and in some cases, it was actually enough to make the owner sell the car. But um, I think this is just one of those problems that Hyundai just really needs to recall and create some kind of splash shield that bolts on over the sensor. Not a hard thing to do. Plastic splash shield, very easy to manufacture and attach. I'm sure there's attachment points down there, so they really need to step up. This is, like I said, probably the most common issue I've seen with this car. And again, this is a pretty major one because it will make your car go into limp mode and it's just a pain in the butt to uh, track down the, the issue. So that is the number one issue that I've seen with this car. And I can't say for sure if this affects the Kona N and the Veloster N, but definitely, definitely a problem with the Elantra N. Okay, so on to number two, the second most common issue I see concerning the 22 and 23 Hyundai Elantra Ns is the front collision warning sensor randomly popping up on the dash and making a chiming sound only to disappear after like a split second. So that's why we're inside the car right now. Uh, it actually happens right here. So you see this circle here with the door. My door is open. That's why it's showing this little warning. But what happens is there's an issue with the sensor and whether it be the sensor getting dirty or I've heard that um, the sensor can overheat. It makes this little light up ring pop up for a second and then disappear. I mean, you can't even you can't even see exactly what it says, but what it is, is that front collision warning. Um, now, I do suffer from this. It's happened many times, actually. It happens about every 500 miles or so. So it's not all the time but about every 500 miles or so it'll pop on and pop off real quick i hear the chime and i said okay that's just the that's the sensor going doing its weird thing um, i don't believe that there's again a definite answer to why it does this but um, it is a big deal to some people and i have known some owners to seriously fight hyundai on this and if the dealership is unable to fix it which they are unable to fix it because they don't know what's causing it They've actually had Hyundai buy back their vehicle. So again, to me, not that big of a deal. Um, it is a little annoying, but it only happens once every 500 miles or so. So I'm not going crazy over it, but it is very common. I, I have just seen multiple, multiple people comment anytime there's a post about it. That happens to me too, not a big deal. So that is definitely the second most common issue with the Hyundai Elantra. All right. Number three on the list of top 10 most common issues with the Hyundai Elantra N is bad fuel injectors. So uh, what happened is there was a bad batch of fuel injectors created and produced and put into the Hyundai Elantra N as well as the Kona N and the Veloster N. This has kind of been an ongoing problem for a long time. 
I believe this mostly affects early VIN number uh, Elantra ends, but it's been affecting the Kona N. Well, I guess it would be early production of the Kona N um, as well as Veloster N production for a while. So this is kind of one of those things you don't really know when it's going to happen. Uh, some people experience it a couple hundred miles in. Other people experience it tens of thousands of miles in. And what happens is the car just starts running absolutely terrible. It runs bad. It sounds bad. It, it's like it's running on three cylinders because it most likely is. That's exactly what's going on. Um, I've even heard of some owners getting the fuel inductors replaced. And then another bad fuel injector is in that batch of fuel injectors they put on. So this is one of those, again, one of those issues that Hyundai has, I don't know, I wouldn't say that they've ignored, but they haven't really addressed. Um, and it's a, a little annoying and I just knock on wood, it hasn't happened to me, but because it is so um, unpredictable when it's gonna happen, I kind of just expect it maybe to happen at some point someday, but again, hasn't happened to me yet. Number four, most common issues with the Hyundai Elantra N is the high pressure fuel pump. And that lives right underneath this foam kind of insulator. So the Hyundai Elantra N comes with a high pressure fuel pump. Obviously it's a high performance turbo engine. Now what it doesn't do is it doesn't flow as good as the Sonata N-Line high pressure fuel pump. And so what happens is if you're tuning this car, when you hit the higher RPMs, the fuel pump just cannot supply enough fuel to the engine and the car will cut power. And uh, in extreme cases, it'll actually prevent the car from running. It's pretty rare for that to happen, but it has happened. But again, this is something that typically happens with cars that are tuned. I have very rarely heard of any fuel pump issues with stock cars. It has happened, but the vast majority of the time, it's going to be a, a tuned car and pretty easy remedy. Again, you just drop in the Sonata N-Line high pressure fuel pump, and that seems to solve the problem. Number five on the list of the 10 most common issues with the Hyundai Elantra N is a backwards installed clutch in manual cars. Now my car is a DCT, so obviously I don't have a manual transmission, although I guess it's technically an automated manual. <laughs> we won't go down that road in this discussion though. But uh, in manual cars, there was a batch of them where they installed the clutch disc backwards from the production line, which is absolutely crazy. I don't know how that happens, but it happens and um, not a super common issue. So we're starting to get down into those kind of niche, like very rare um, issues with this car. But it did happen and there was a recall on it. So if you have a manual six speed Elantra N and you're noticing some weird shifting, it's probably because of the clutches, clutch discs being installed backwards. Okay, number six on the list of the top 10 most common problems with the Hyundai Elantra N is the DCT recall. So that's the wet dual clutch transmission in the Elantra N, as well as a bunch of other models that it affected. Now, although it did affect a bunch of models and there was a large number of cars that did need to have the recall done, it was a relatively small number of Elantra Ns that were affected by this. And so what happens is there's a software glitch apparently in the TCU and uh, the DCT will basically make the ECU believe that the car was over revved and it'll put it in limp mode and sometimes just completely shut the car off and leave you completely stranded on the side of the road. So again, there is a recall for this. There was a very small number of Elantra ends uh, involved with the recall. Number seven on the list of the most common issues with the Hyundai Elantra N is the horn not working. Now, this actually might be a little more common than the last two that I talked about, but uh, it's not a huge issue. So, you know, um, I kind of put it a little lower on the list, but essentially what happens is it'll start not working intermittently or it'll just completely stop working. Mine obviously works. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I haven't experienced a problem with that. I don't know. My thoughts are maybe it has something to do with people that live in a very high humidity area so maybe by the ocean or something like that and something gets corroded i believe that's the cause for it 
Number eight on the list of the most common issues is the front suspension going out of alignment, which results in the car pulling to the right. So now I've only heard of this happening to a handful of owners, and usually it happens after they say hit a huge pothole or something like that. But it seems to be that the car always pulls to the right in the situations that uh, people describe this happening. Now I have a little bit of a theory on why some people might be confusing the sensation of the car pulling to the right. And that is that a lot of roads are tilted slightly to the right for drainage purposes. And so this car stock comes with Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 4S's. Um, not what I have. I have aftermarket wheels, obviously, with Continental DWS 06. But they're both pretty grippy tires. And so I have actually experienced the sensation of this car feeling like it's pulling to the right and then getting on a wider road that doesn't have as much a pitch and it goes away. So I'm not saying that that's the reason for all of them. Uh, there definitely have been people with proof that the suspension is out of spec. There doesn't seem to be a consensus on why that happens. So it's kind of a mystery. Number nine on the list is the active exhaust valve rattling on cold starts. Now, I do have this happen, and uh, it's very slight. I feel like most cars with active exhaust experience some sort of pinging or uh, rattling noise when you first start the car up. Um, so to me, it's not a big deal, but it drives some owners crazy. And uh, one remedy for this car, bizarrely enough, is to replace the stock exhaust valve spring with a Mopar spring. Um, because the challengers and chargers have active exhaust much like this car does some people say it makes a difference other people say it doesn't some people say it makes it rattle more <laughs> so again for me it's not a big deal um you know it doesn't really bother me that much so i just live with it but it is a pretty common issue on this car okay we've made it to the final most common issue on the list and it's sort of a broad issue so it's going to cover different areas of the car and what that is, is just semi-poor quality control and build quality of some of the parts on this car. So some complaints are that the, and this includes me, is that the paint is pretty thin on this car, especially on the front bumper. So you will notice after 20,000 miles, I have chips, little chips, and the red trim is very easily chipped up there. So very, very common complaint and but this is not you know isolated to hyundai this is a common thing across the auto industry because they now use water-based paints for cars uh, some of the other complaints are rattles on the inside of the car and those will typically come from the door panels rattling somewhere in here the floorboard will rattle a lot of times the dashboard now I've just experienced the door rattle. So just something to think about. You are probably gonna experience rattles in this car. It is still based on a compact economy model. So the Elantra is a cheap compact car. So you are gonna get those type of things, rattles and stuff like that. So not that big of a deal, just something that you live with when you buy this car. Um, some people have found some loose suspension bolts underneath. Um, I haven't done like a full on inspection of this car underneath, but I haven't experienced any kind of weird suspension issues. So I haven't had a reason to look under there, but some people have found that I haven't myself, but it could happen. Um, peeling and chipping window trim is also a very common issue. So I believe it usually happens right up here in the corner. They'll start peeling. I do actually have a tiny little scratch there. So I don't know if that's the start of it. Not a big deal again. I mean, it's it's under warranty, so that would, should be an easy fix. Another very common issue is this trim piece here. We'll start pulling up from the edge of the door. So you're just gonna get little things like that. Like I said, this kind of just is a broad, you know, quality control and, um, you know, and, and build quality thing. So again, not the end of the world. It's an economy car. That's what you're going to experience with an economy car. It's not built to be a luxury car and blow you away with how quiet it is or anything like that. But for what it is, I still think it's an excellent car. And I had just as many rattles in other higher end cars. So not a big deal. 
All right, guys, so that's it. That's the top 10 most common problems with the Hyundai Elantra N. Like I said, this can also cross over to the Kona N and the Veloster N. So some of the common problems do occur across th all three models. But overall, this car has been so fantastic. It's been incredibly reliable and the small little annoyances don't even come close to, you know, to the fun factor and just how enjoyable this car is. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Also, let me know if there's anything that you think I missed as far as problems go with this car. And I've been part of the groups for a while and I've been really paying attention to all those different things and just things I've experienced, but there might be something that I missed. So let me know if there is. And as always, like and subscribe till the next video, guys. Peace out.